In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Summoned through the power of the Holy Spirit, we gather to listen the to the challenges God issues to us in today's scriptures. Let us humbly welcome the living word of God in our midst, praying that we may be made worthy of the calling we received in baptism. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Holy One of God. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your Magdi God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray.
O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasurers of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses. Taking some of the spirit that was on Moses, the Lord bestowed it on the 70 elders, and as the spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. Now two men, one named Eldad and the other Medad, were not in the gathering, but had been left in the camp. They too had been on the list, but had not gone out to the tent, yet the Spirit came to rest on them also, and they prophesied in the camp. So when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, Joshua, son of Nun, who from his youth had been Moses' aide, said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses answered them, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets. Would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on them all. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is number 27. Lord, you have the words. reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep and wail over your impending miseries. Your wealth has rotted away, your clothes have become moth-eaten, your gold and silver have corroded. 
and that corrosion will be a testimony against you. It will devour your flesh like a fire. You have stored up treasures for the last days. Behold the wages you withheld from your workers, who harvested your fields, are crying aloud, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts for the day of slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the righteous one. He offers you no resistance. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen. I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great milestone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life named, named than with two hands go into Yehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Jehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Yehenna, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. Those who are involved in one or more committees or ministries at Holy Family Parish 
for those who are volunteers at St. Vincent de Paul, know that there are so many things to do, but still there is the need for more people to commit themselves to make Holy Family a more active parish, to serve better all of you, our parishioners, and to reach out those who are thirsty for God. We are not sufficient to do everything. God needs you. We need you. And you have a, pl a place to serve with us. The key understanding, the key of understanding of today's readings is that no one can be excluded from the service of building God's kingdom upon the earth. The book of, of Numbers tells us that God took some of the spirit that was on Moses and bestowed it on a total of 72 members of the Israelites. There are at least two reasons for doing so. Firstly, God's spirit, God's grace is not a private privilege and does not belong only to a few people. It is a gift for everybody who believes in God. Secondly, the task of taking care of all the people of Israel was too much for only one person or for a few people. So then, it was necessary to involve others breaking down every kind of selfishness, envy, and prejudice. Now, Nun, who was, who from his youth had been Moses' aide, asked Moses to stop Eldad and Medad from prophesying because they did not come to the gathering. But Moses replied, Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets. In other words, we may say, Would that each parishioner of holy family were a member of a choir or be a member of any of the different groups of services? or be a catechist, or be a volunteer at St. Vincent de Paul? Would that all the people of the Lord were at the service of others? The spirit that came upon those 72 people was a spirit of prophecy, which means that they were able to speak God's words to the rest of the people and to talk to God regarding the people's need. A prophet, in this case, is a link between God and his people and vice versa. A prophet is the one who knows God and leads others to God. Something similar happened in today's gospel. Somebody, somebody without a name, meaning that that one can be you, is driving out demons in Jesus' name, but he does not belong to the group of the twelve. When John asked Jesus to stop him, 
Jesus replied with these words of wisdom. Do not prevent him. No one who performs a mighty deed in my name can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Perhaps the disciples have forgotten that their calling to be with Jesus was a gift, not by their own merit. Now they are reminded by the Lord that the task of building God's kingdom is a task of everybody. Now that we are only three pastors at Holy Family, we cannot do everything alone. We need you, dear brothers and sisters. The Lord is calling you to put into action your baptismal consecration. All of us were anointed with the chrism of salvation to become members of Christ, priest, prophet, and king. So, my dear brothers and sisters, be open to the Holy Spirit. For whoever is not against us is for us, said Jesus. And with Moses, let us say, would that all the people of the Lord were prophets. And may the Lord bestow upon you his Holy Spirit in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As one family, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Guided by the Spirit you have given us, we raise our prayers to you. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that church leaders may be open to the inspiration of the spirit of justice for the rights of all. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That political leaders may be single-hearted 
as they work in a spirit of justice for the rights of all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who plant, those who plant and harvest may be rewarded with a fair share of the wealth of the fields, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In gratitude of our social, many social ministry volunteers who through their acts of discipleship exemplify their Catholic faith through their life of prayer, works of mercy, and as witnesses to the justice and peace of the gospel, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout the world and for the safe return of our military men and women, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for Clayton Reister, Dolores Berger, Mary Dunish, John Cabat, Genevieve Oleg, and Robert Smet, who died this past week. And for those remembered at this Mass, Bob Hoy, Mel Tree Levin, Donald and Josephine Barbeau, and the living and deceased of the Tyson and Montague families, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all our personal petitions, We pray. Merciful God, you know our sins and failings, and yet you always invite us to turn back to you. Hear our prayers today. Grant peace to our world and renew our hope in the world to come with you and your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Please join me in singing our preparation song, number 501, All You Who Are Thirsty.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion, for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising, from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Benedict, our Pope, and Jerome, our Archbishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant here peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
meaning of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and his charity and eternal life to all who receive it. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. At this moment, I invite all the social ministry volunteers to stand, please. Good evening. Thank you, Father Max. This evening, we're celebrating the wonderful volunteers we have in our social ministry. So Holy Family is very proud to be able to extend our appreciation through this Mass and a social and luncheon that's going to follow in the hall. Actually, we invited about 400 different people who are involved in our many social ministries, and we had the response of about 100 people who were able to attend. But I also see, as I looked around today at Mass, a lot more of them are here this evening. So if you are able to join us in the hall, please, please join us. It's just our way of extending our appreciation to the wonderful work of our social ministry volunteers. Loving God, the Catholic community of Holy Family, thanks you for giving us this opportunity to gather together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We sincerely thank the many volunteers who live out their faith through our social ministry efforts. We thank you for helping them and each one of us to be mindful that you are with us as the comforter, the spirit of truth, the one who draws us together in love and peace. Help us, help all of us to keep open our hearts and minds as we go forth to follow your call and live as your disciples in a complex and confusing world. Now, I ask the, to the entire congregation to extend your right hand on these volunteers. We will pray for them and we will bless them. That may the Lord help them to keep doing the good they are doing. Blessed are you, Lord God of mercy, who through your Son gave us a marvelous example of charity and the great commandment of love for one another. Send down your blessings on these your servants, who so generously devote themselves to helping others. When they are called on in times of need, let them faithfully serve you in their neighbor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 
together let us say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May your Magdi God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, go forth. The Mass is ended. Please join me in singing our closing song, number 718. We are called. <laughs>